Well, good morning. It's, um, what day is it? I think it's the 23rd of August. It's a Wednesday. So we've spent a couple of days in Broken Hill after the um, six days that we spent out at the Monday Monday Plains, which was fantastic. And then we were, we just restocked and um, picked up some groceries. Got a bag of wood left over from the bash. Got another one in the car. And uh, now we're heading out to um, Mount Gibbs Station, which is only, I think it's only about 70 k's from Broken Hill. We'll go out there for two or three days, and then we uh, might head out to one of the national parks for a couple of days. And then uh, we'll just sort of work our way up towards Tipperborough, and then uh, maybe Malparinka as well. And then um, we'll go out to Cameron's Corner, and then if the weather's going to be like this, we'll head up to Inaminka. But um, yeah, it's a beautiful day today. Wind was nasty yesterday, everybody was inside yesterday, but it's only uh, 9.30 in the morning now. It's still, it's only 12 degrees, but there's no wind, so it's really nice. So that we're sort of heading bush now, so it'll be more outback stuff to show you. So we'll start doing some hikes and walks and things like that, and uh, give you a look at what's going on. <laughs> You've been in the ass with that. What are you? Shit, now we go. <laughs> this is Steve. So this is Stevens Creek. Gibbs Homestead drive slowly. So. I will wait here because no doubt they have dogs and you know what will happen if I go out. Yeah. You go to the homestead and you pay and yeah. then you get the guided tour out to where you're going to stay. Yeah. Um, what a cracking spot. This is um, the, one of the bush camps at Mount Gipps Station. and. Uh, Got the whole little spot to ourselves, but just have a look at the scenery around here. Very Australian. So they've got a little map they give you that you can sort of 
go and explore some of the gorges and valleys and hills in the area which we'll do after we have a little bit of lunch and uh, we've got a bit of firewood and there's a little fire pit here um, and we're in this little valley so we're out of that wind which is nice because it's a really cold westerly wind how nice is that tree beautiful so we're just going to go for a little walk up to the top of this little outcrop here give you a look at the campsite from up there so you know how we're leaving i said to him do you want your shoes he goes no but there's prickles here you watch you'll be soaking in no time i have the aussie safety boots on again Hey, but look, the sun's out, got the shorts on. Look at all this. And your quartz. Quartz everywhere. We gold here. Would be. How's this for a campsite though? Oh, fuck it, they've got a thong for them. Is that Jimmy? Yeah. I think I'll go back and get me boots. You think so? Why? <laughs> I've only come that far. Uh -huh. yeah. Prickles everywhere, eh? Look at him, his foot. Oh. Look, it's everywhere. Oh, nasty. Do you want me to go get your shoes? I'll go get my boots, yeah. So, what are you going to do next time I say? Are you sure you don't want your shoes? Yes, we might listen to the navigator. <laughs> She's right every now and then. So, man is like a child. You can tell him, and you can tell him, but he won't do it until it's too late, and he decides it's a not a good idea himself. I don't know what to do with this man. Just man just does not listen. So this is on top of the hill, and we're, we're camped down there, and uh, just nothing. You can see the farm over there that we went into, and she's brought us all the way out here. It's just beautiful, peaceful, nobody else around. Then you've been seeing no kangarooskis. It's on your feet, man. <laughs> I've got my proper boots on now. Yeah. <laughs> Not taking any chances. Oh, a kangaroo. Where? So we're at the back of Mount Gipps Station. That's the homestead over there. And we're in one of their bush camps down here by the creek. No water in the creek at the moment though. But beautiful remote spot. Just saw a couple of kangaroos. Lots of bird life around. Very Australian epic. Ran around for a little bit of firewood this afternoon about three o'clock and found a couple of twigs and put them in the fire pit hoping that I could light it about 5, 5 30. <coughs> but whoever was here yesterday had a few smouldering coals under the ashes and the fire started about 2 30 so now we're out of firewood and it's only six o'clock. <laughs> That's two bags. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> Well, our campsite is just beautiful mm, yeah. and um, had a peaceful night's sleep, woke up to bird song, just wonderful. Jimmy cleaned the dust off of the 
panels. Solar panels. Solar panels. <laughs> it went from getting, what was it, 12 vapes going in to after I cleaned them to 27. <laughs> That's how much dust is on there from mostly from the Monday Monday bash. Yeah. And um, so today we're just going to go out and have a look at this beautiful property. Apparently there's a gorge, so we're going to go and we're going to check the gorge out and just have a nice day looking around. Then we're off again tomorrow? Yeah, well, I'm not sure where we're going yet tomorrow. We might go to the National Park, the, what is it, Mata, Mata Winji National Park? Yeah. With some nice gorges and hikes in there, so we might go there for a couple of days. Uh -huh. And okay. then we'll just, we'll just keep wandering north and see what we can see. Beautiful. But so peaceful here. Yeah, isn't it? So we're in the, um, the gorge at the Mount Gipps station and just walking along the gorge and there's these veins of quartz running through the rocks. All the way up there. There's quartz everywhere here. So this is only about 70 k's from Broken Hill, which Broken Hill is a huge silver tin and um, zinc mine area. So apparently there, there is an old miner's shack somewhere on this property, so we'll see if we can find that. But that's a really deep vein, that one, isn't it? But um, yeah, you just you see a couple of spots along here where the sheep have been digging near the base of rocks and there's water just under the ground. Like here you can see how damp the ground is just here. It's actually almost wet. Dig down a bit and you find the water. I didn't bring my shovel. You dig it. Here. Use your fingers, man. Use yours. You get a rock. No, actually, you can see the water down there. Yeah. Choices, you gotta be right 50%. Of the time. <laughs> okay, so what happened is I'm looking at the map and we get to the blue car and we're facing the blue car, right? So I'm looking at this map and I'm going blue car. All right, so it has to go this way. And if we go right, we're going to the miner's hut. And if we go left, we're going to look out. And Jim just grabs the map and says, Nope, and he goes right. And guess where we are? <laughs> She's gotta be right every day. <laughs> So this is the miner's hut. Do you think there might be some gold up here? Day's empty. Oh no, this has got broken beer bottles in it. This is what you call your outside bath? Outside bath, we must have a bunny roll on it. <laughs> and there's your outdoor oven, your outdoor kitchen. Some bad people have broken the glass by the looks of things. Bunk beds, kitchen, shower. Yeah. There's a lamp sweet in there. Pretty fancy. Mm. No TV. The door unlocked. Mm -hmm. Got two fridges. The so there wouldn't have been any electricity. No. So how do you make the fridges run? No, they would just use them for, um, for what are called cool boxes. Uh huh. They might have them. Indoor kitchen. 
Pretty fancy. Look, a pair of shoes. Fireplace. That'd be very handy in the winter time. I guess this um, plasticky stuff was to keep the flies out. Yeah. Old fish and chip shop. Yeah. Reminder. Pretty fancy. You'd be keen to live out here on your own, wouldn't you? Yeah. Little storage thing. It's a bit cute. Some timber. There you go, some wood for the fire. Lots of bits of broken glass. Yeah. Beer bottles. Imagine walking out here, no roads. Which way would you go? Yeah. Don't ask the wrong way, Wendy. <laughs> you gotta look out. <laughs> but there'd be no road. How'd I find the lookout? I go to the top of the hill only to find that there's another hill. Another Just hill. gotta go down up another one. Now, this is a lookout. So, over in the distance, you can see the windmills. So that's where we went for the Monday Monday bash, I think. And then, but don't, don't quote me because I'm wrong way Wendy. Jimmy, I think is gonna send a drone up here. Yeah. So, are, are, is that where the Monday Monday Bash was? Where those windmills are? Or are they just other windmills? Oh, that's hard to go. I think we're further than that away. That's because you've got to go back to Broken Hill, and then you've got to go the other side of Broken Hill. So, I would think, I would think they're too, they're too close to be Monday Monday. You think so? Yeah. But then, I don't know. I'll do, a, I'll do a, uh, a 360 from up here. I'll send a drone up in a minute. So this property is 85,000 acres, which is about 39,000 hectares. Yeah. It's a big piece of dirt, but land like this is probably worth $100, $100 an acre. Yeah.
exploring the gorge. How beautiful is this, eh? Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. So, when they say no man can go where no man has been before, um, I think they're talking about the toilet. Because it doesn't matter where you go, a man can pick, find a tree anywhere. Or even in the desert, they can just, just go to the toilet anywhere. So man can go where no man has gone before. <laughs> So this is where the old miner's hut is on Mount Kip Station. You'd be keen to live out here on your own, wouldn't you? Be a fair way to the nearest source of water from here, I would think. Maybe down in the valley there somewhere. There's an old um, car there. Oh, the hatch. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, they must have been using this spot for target practices, broken beer bottles everywhere. Broken beer bottles and bits of old car. Mm. There's beer bottles there, yeah. They're all everywhere. Mm. You wouldn't be going around here barefoot. It's a strange sort of um, beauty to this type of country. It's just, it's, it's so calming and peaceful, yet it's, it's harsh as well. You can see the attraction, you'd see why people would like to live out here. Be a big job going around and pick up all that broken glass. There's <laughs> broken beer bottles everywhere. And car parts everywhere too. What's that down there? Okay, you want to go have a look? Looks like a car. So this looks like the uh, where the miner was operating. Well, let's see if we can ask the owners about what he was doing, looking for silver or gold. Or... Look at that! It looks like he's got little flecks of all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff see. in it, doesn't it? So all the rocks are all the same, all quartz rocks. So I'm tipping he was after gold. It in some of it, some yeah. of it. Looks like it goes in underground. Yeah, must have backfilled it. Yeah. So there must have been a vein through here. And he's been digging the vein up. Obviously it goes in there a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, that's it. I want you to go for a fall over. <laughs> well, it goes in a fair way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's some uh, commitment, isn't it? Yeah. 
the little stuff that he dug out. Yeah, that, that bit there. It just looks yeah. like silver in it, doesn't yeah. it? I wonder how long he was here for. The pile of rocks he's dug, in here, dug out over the years. Right the pile of rocks he dug out over the years, eh? Yeah. So this is either the the entrance point or the exit point. But there's uh, nothing around to tell you what it's about. So I don't know where he is. Well, no, we... That's his little hut up over the hill there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if the owners of the station can tell us They're just coming. how long he was here for. So we're going back up to the lookout to um, watch the sunset. So... I might report the rough this morning. Yesterday it didn't seem as rough as the, the terrain, the hill going up, but yeah, it's quite rough. So, um, it was beautiful yesterday. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like as the sun sets. We've been seeing goats and sheep and kangaroos coming up here. I haven't seen an emu. Oh, there's Gangy. Hey, Gangy. Oh. stomach rustles working to keep me in the um, seat when Jimmy's driving because he doesn't believe in slow and easy it's like fast as, fast as you can go up the hill come on we're almost there come on we're, let's go let's go you need a steering wheel to hang on to I need a steering wheel to hang on to so we still got to go up that track that you see up ahead so that's the top of the hill up there so I'll shut off for a minute there's a cow or something there so just watch it doesn't jump out at you Goats. It's goats, and kangaroos. There they go. These are wild. These are wild goats, and what they do is once a year they um, corral them and uh, catch them as many as they can, and they sell them off because there's a market for wild goat, apparently. Yeah. So when they got small arthritis, they like them for keeping the grass down, which is good. I think the Indians like them to make that um, goat curry too. I'm sure they have many of uses. The wool of the cashmere on the goats is pretty good too. Oh yeah, cashmere. Everything has a purpose. Even Jimmy. <laughs> oh, this is I'll have to get out and have a look. I'll, go I'll give you a bit of a look around. Just before the sun goes down. I've been at the driveway, Grandma. 
at the at the driving, mm -hmm. sitting on the tailgate. Yep. Waiting for it to go down a bit so I can look at it. Right mm. now it's a bit too bright. I'm just looking at it through the camera. So. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you set this one up too? Look, mm -hmm. I'll put it up here for you. Put it on a time lapse. <laughs> second day at Mount Gipps station. Uh, we booked initially booked in for two days but it's so beautiful here we've decided to stay another day. Um, we had a little bit of a walk around today, had a look at the, the gorge and explored a few of the tracks around the station. And uh, talking to the owner today and um, there's little mine shafts all over the property and they're uh, looking for tin. So that old miner's hut that we had a look at earlier on, uh, that guy was there looking for tin and that little tunnel under the ground that we had a look at. Uh, he's apparently dug 25 of those across that ridge there. Uh, I forgot to ask the guy when he was here but the stuff in the shed there looks like it's from the 60s, 60s and 70s. So I imagine it was around about that time. Um, but this is on wiki camps. Um, if you're anywhere near Broken Hill, I think it's 40 k's um, north of Broken Hill. Uh, put it on your bucket list for a couple of days at least. It's uh, you can you can bush camp like we are, or they've got powered sites up near the homestead. Um, I don't know how much the, the powered sites are, but the bush camps is 20 bucks a night for a van, uh, and it's it's just it, real outback Australia, like it's it's beautiful. The sun on the rocks, different times of the day is just spectacular. What do you think about it, Grandma? I like it. I like it's it. good. Yeah. 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 We get to uh, see the sheep. There's lots of birds. Yeah, it's almost spring, so we're end of end of August now. So the lambs are out and about. So we saw a couple today. It looked like they're only a day or two old. So they're white, and Mum's red from the red dirt. Um, but yeah, there's loads of them around here. So he's got 140,000 acres here and he, he's only got 10,000 sheep on that. Um, he could probably do a little bit more with the amount of rain they've had this year. But for like our cousins in Ireland, that, that's, you know, like that's one sheep per 14 acres. Um, you may imagine that in Ireland. I don't, I don't know what Uncle Huey used to get, but I'm tipping he was getting two, two or three sheep to an acre there. But here you got one sheep, 14 acres. Um, he says he's got one paddock that is 25 kilometres by 25 kilometres. So when they're, uh, they're when they're mustering the sheep, they've got to use helicopters. There's just no other way. So uh, a yeah, helicopter costs 500 bucks an hour with the pilot, but he can do more work in an hour than you know a dozen motorbikes and men on horses can do. But yeah, I love this sort of stuff. This is like real out back Australia, you know, you got the um, the sort of the, the ghost gums or the river red gums all over the place, so I'll give you a little bit of a look. So, you got these guys here. So they're um, all over the place down here, like so. It might look dry, but these little river beds all over the place, they've, they've got water not that far under the ground. So if you ever get lost out here, dig a hole, go down a metre or two near, near the base of one of those trees, and more likely than not you'll come across water. But it's, um, it's pretty good timber to burn. So we've got, got a bag of it off the guy at the homestead. It's, it's beautiful red gum. 
and uh, burns beautifully. Get some nice coals going there if you want to do some spuds in the fire or do a pot roast on this fire. But yeah, Mount Gibbs Station, New South Wales, about 40 k's north of Broken Hill. It's just spectacular. So we're off again? Off again. Where are we headed to? We're going to, I'm not sure how to say, Matawin, Matawinjit National Park. Yeah. Which That's is cool. uh, right only about, I think, 80 k's away. 80 k's. Something like that. Nice. So goodbye, flies. Hopefully, we don't find any more. <laughs> This year there's going to be flies everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So, but right, what a beautiful spot. So peaceful. We stayed an extra day and um, we went up and watched the um, sunset yesterday on top of the lookout. And it's just beautiful. So, definitely come and have a look. Why does this back corner, don't I? Okay, so last time we come through this gate, because of this mound of dirt here, was a bit of a challenge getting the turn right. So keep coming this way. Okay, yep, now you're good, the wheels are passed. So he's had to come out a bit, so when we were going in, we um, couldn't cut it as wide and we took the little clip off the awning, so, which is, um, here, so he just touched the gate because he's impatient and wouldn't listen to me and uh, yeah I did that <laughs> so now we've got to get a new awning clip but goodbye this has been an absolute amazing place so what do you call that a crowd of emus a flock a, I don't know what they call a it, prowse it. A mob, I think. I think it's a, a mob. mob. There's more for kangaroos, there might be more for emus too, I think. Yeah. You'll have to Google it. Google it. <coughs> we'll find out for you. Okay, so we're at the uh, information centre at Matawinji National Park. And uh, there's a little bit of info here. So this is um, one of the first national parks to be handed back to the Aboriginals. Um, during the land rights campaign in the early 1980s, I think it was 1983 or something like that. So there's a um, small campground that's suitable for trailers and, and uh, caravans. Uh, but you've got to book online. It's only $6 per adult plus a booking fee. So I think it's um, two nights, 24 bucks, something like that. But up at the information centre, they've got a some calling operated barbecues and a few information boards so there's a bit of a story here about the um, land rights campaigns uh, so this area here was originally um, settled by pastoralists in the 1830s and uh, of course they didn't know anything about this type of land and pretty much ruined the land um, the only thing that sort of saved it was that um, when the gold rush came in the um, 1850s, most of the farmers went back to Bendigo and Ballarat and uh, in an endeavour to strike their fortune in the gold fields. And so during that time, then a lot of the local traditional owners were able to move back to the land. And then uh, from that point on, they sort of cohabitated the land. But now um, this is a very large national park now, well protected and has a land council that looks after it. Uh, a couple of people on the board from the local council, local farmers. So we're going to spend a couple of days here and have a bit of a look around and uh, see if we can spot some of the local wildlife. There's um, apparently yellow-footed rock wallabies here, which are an endangered species. Uh, there's a a lizard that is almost extinct here um, that they found just recently and uh, so we'll have a look around there's a little bit of uh, Aboriginal artwork and some caves and water holes and that to have a look at so we'll spend a couple of days here and see if there's anything worth 
video and for you guys. So here's just an update on the the zone uh, as far as dust goes. Um, we just did, I think it was 60 kilometres of dirt road, and it's that real fine red, you know, powdery stuff. It's like talcum powder, um, and uh, not a speck of dust in the van. There was um, a little bit of dust gets past the glass and sits in here. Um, but no, no dust gets past that seal. Um, you know, same with the cupboard here. The dust comes in this section here, but doesn't get past the seal. Um, no dust in the tunnel boots. You know, so the only dust we have in this van so far is what comes in on our shoes, or when you sit in the dusty area with your fly screen door open, will be a bit of dust blow through there. So you know, we've had. A, a few dusty days but um yeah so i'm very very happy with the um the ability of this van to keep the dust out because that's been one of my pet hates with caravanning is just the the dust can ruin a holiday but um this van certainly lives up to its reputation kudos to you guys at zone and uh, here's another thing, the, uh, I've had rock tamers and a stone stomper. The, the stone stomper does a much better job of protecting the front of the caravan like the, the rock tamers stop <coughs> a bit, but it, it really doesn't protect the front of the van. So there's not even that much dust on the front of the van. Um, and the extra protection that weighed salmon sells, you think it's worth the 800 bucks? Have a look at this. That's um, that's only after, I reckon in total, I've done maybe 100 k's of dirt road. And look at the, um, the stone damage to those mud flaps. Well, if that wasn't on the mud flaps, it'd be on your suspension components. <coughs> so this is the uh, Rock Holes Hotel. Ruin all that's left of it now is the foundations, basically. But this is, um, I mean, you get a little bit of an indication from the drone footage, but this is in the middle of nowhere. It's um, about halfway between Broken Hill and White Cliffs. So back in the 1890s, the only form of transport was well, transport was horse-drawn carts and carriages. And uh, so the uh, guy that owned the farm here um, decided to build a little shanty on the side of the road and start selling beer but uh, it was destroyed by fire in 1915 I'm tipping they don't get anywhere near as much traffic now 